In this video, we're going to take a look at three different methods to fill in an opening in a surface body. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to carry on with our Surface Mastery series, and we're going to talk about the loft and the patch tool once more, but this time we're going to talk about using these interior guide rails. Now, oftentimes, when you're trying to fill in an opening in a surface, you have some reason for that. You're not just trying to patch it cleanly, you might be trying to change the geometry. So in this case, we're going to take a look at how we can create a surface that fills in this area using three different methods, and unfortunately, get three different results. So if you want to follow along, go to the description of the video and download this data set. We're going to start with the surface patch tool. And when I go to surface patch, note that I have group edges turned on, which will automatically grab this entire boundary for me. Now that patch looks pretty good on its own. We're going to be using curvature continuity, which should give us a really good result for carrying the curvature from the surrounding edge. However, we want to use these interior spline rails. So we're going to select the interior rails points, select one. We have to go back to select that box again to select the second one. And note that with these rails, we don't have any way to control curvature or tangency direction. We're going to say OK, and now we've created that first surface. I'm going to select that surface body. I'm going to call it patch. And while it's selected, I'm going to hit M on the keyboard and just move it off to the side. We're going to hide it. I'm going to bring those two sketches, sketch two and sketch three back, and we're going to repeat the process using loft. Now with loft, I'm going to go from this upper edge to this lower edge. Then for my rails, I'm going to start at this side, select the first spline, the second spline, and then the final edge. Once again, I am going to use curvature continuity. I'm going to make sure that the rails have curvature continuity. And there's something interesting that is different about doing this versus doing the patch. We have curvature continuity and tangency in both options, and we can apply that to the rails that are on the edge of the surface and the profiles. However, the only tangency weight control that we have is at the start and the end of profiles. So here, if we want to change the first profile and the last profile to 0.5, that way we get a little bit closer to the patch result, we can do that. But we can't change it on the rails. Those are just going to be what they are using that curvature. We're going to say OK. I'm going to hide those two sketches for now. And we can see this result looks a little bit better. However, it appears that there might be a pocket that's forming in those corners. That might be what the intent is here. But let's go ahead and let's change this to loft one. With it selected, once again, I'm going to hit M. And I'm just going to move it off to the side and hide it. Now, the third method here is going to be building this up with smaller sections. Now, the reason that I would do this and the reason that I generally do this is to break up my surface patches based on the surrounding curvature. So for example, what I would do is I might potentially patch this entire boundary using curvature continuity. If I take a look at the analysis of this, we can see that it forms these little pockets in the side. I'm going to hit cancel and I'm going to do the same thing with loft. This time I'm going to loft from this edge to this edge, and I'm going to use my rails at the upper and lower sections. Once again, I'm going to use curvature continuity and take a look at analysis of this. So once again, you can see that this looks OK, but there is some sort of weird formation that's happening in the middle. With loft, we can go back and we can try the aligned edges, see if that changes anything. In this case, it won't because we're using rails. And we can also change the tangency weights. So if I go back to those profiles, I can set these to 0.5. But remember, this is controlling it at the profile, not at the rail. The rails are on the top and the bottom. The profile is the start and end. So depending on which method you choose, again, you might get a different result. But that's OK, because it's going to work for what we need. I'm going to go ahead and create this loft, noting that we do have that small bump that's happening right in the middle. So with this loft, what I would typically do is I would break up the rest of the surfaces based on curvature. So if we hide that, and this time we try again using inspect curvature map analysis on the entire body, and then we create a new sketch on the top plane. What I want to do here is I want to break the surfaces up based on the change in curvature. So we can do this with lines. It doesn't have to be exact. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw a straight line across down and then back across the other direction. 
And what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to separate those purple sections at this edge here from the green, yellow, and orange. And once I have that, I'm gonna go to my modify split face. I wanna split the face using this as my tool. Once we've split the face, now if we come back and we try to do a loft, we can go from one edge to the other, this time using curvature continuity. And this time, because we don't have a rail, the aligned edge is going to be important. You can see how it makes sure that that curvature is nice and following those edges. And if we take a look at the analysis of this, it's gonna look quite a bit better. And again, the main reason for this is because using the loft where we've got the entire boundary, it's taking input from a lot of different edges and a lot of different curvature. When we use the loft just in that small section, it can focus its attention on the curvature that's important to us. And this is why when we're building surfaces, especially big surfaces, you typically want to avoid any drastic changes in curvature in more than one direction. So you don't really want to build a big surface that goes from convex to concave with multiple inputs because you will run into issues like we saw with body seven, where you end up with that little pocket or that divot that happens on the inside. So now that we have this piece here, we can stitch these together. And this is going to build out one surface. And we can see visually that looks pretty good. The curvature going across, that looks pretty good. I know you're probably thinking, I thought we're building a section of surface that has a bump out. And we are, but this takes, unfortunately, a couple of extra steps. Now, ideally, we would have done this before that hole was cut in the part. But because we don't have that, I'm going back and I'm sort of filling in some gaps, both figuratively and literally. Again, we're gonna use curvature continuity. We're gonna say, okay, right click to repeat that with my marking menu, curvature continuity and say, okay. Once again, I'm gonna sort of stitch all these together. We're gonna to remove them a little bit later. Again, these are a couple of extra steps, but oftentimes taking these extra steps is going to be required to get the surface that you're looking for. Now that we have these, I'm gonna go into my construction and these are the planes that were used to build out those two interior rails that we're gonna be using. I'm gonna use those to split faces and I'm gonna split all of the faces on this body. And we're gonna be using the splitting tool as plane one. And then we're gonna right click and repeat that process, selecting these other edges here. And now my splitting tool is going to be plane two. Now that we have those split, what this means is I can bring back sketch two and sketch three. I can create a loft from that small edge section at the top to the small at the bottom. And then I can use these two splines as my rails. At the top, I can maintain curvature continuity. I can do that at the bottom. And again, because we're using rails, the aligned edge isn't really going to matter, but I'm gonna use it anyways. We're gonna say, okay. And now we've built out the surface that we were probably looking for originally. I do wanna point one thing out here. Notice that with this instance, we have a flip and tangency direction. And that's because we selected an edge that wasn't open. This edge could be from this direction or could be from this direction. And you'll notice that tangency direction option only pops up when you select an edge that maintains that. So now that we have this interior piece, we need to decide where we wanna blend it into. If we wanna keep these edges, then we would need to split the surface up one more time. And we can do that by creating some additional offset planes. So for example, I might select plane two, I'm gonna view this from the front, and I might split it somewhere in the middle. I'm gonna repeat that process using plane one. This time I'm gonna pull it over just a little bit. And again, just looking for a split somewhere in the middle. Modify, split face, and now we're gonna be splitting these faces using that new offset plane. Right click to repeat the process, this time on the left side, and using this as my split plane. So I can hide those planes, I can minimize the construction folder, and now I have all of these extra surfaces. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna select the ones that I don't need. And these are gonna be the ones that are underneath as well. Remember that all these are stitched together right now with the exception of that top piece. And I'm just gonna hit delete. You can also go to modify and select delete from the modify menu, but obviously hitting delete is a little bit quicker. Then we wanna stitch everything together. And now we've got boundaries that we can do things like create a patch in here. We can use curvature continuity. And you can see that we're getting a slightly different result than we had before. 
Now it is rolling over slightly, so we could modify the curvature weight to say 0.25, and we can say okay. Then I'm gonna right click and repeat that on the other side. Once again, I'm gonna use curvature continuity. And once again, I wanna change the tangency weight. I, I don't like how far it's pushing it on this edge. Now, you might be thinking you can control the tangency weight individually in the patch tool, which is true. We can ungroup the edges and then we can control the edge weight individually. However, with the patch tool, I found that it tends to fail when you start doing that across a bunch of different edges. You have to be careful because then you'll get this edge, which has 0.25 weight, and this edge, which has 0.5, they start to fight each other. So now that we have these put together, I'm gonna select, stitch them all together. I'm gonna to use Control and four on the keyboard to hide my edges. And now this is likely the surface that we were probably looking for initially using those guide rails. There are still some issues with this. There are potential problems, but this gives us a little bit better result than taking a look at the original loft and the original patch. So uh, for example, if we wanna bring back the patch and the loft and sort of rotate these around, we can see, I'm gonna go ahead and go to a front view. Uh, we can see that there is a little bit closer result with the loft and the way that we did this one. And the one using the patch just had that weird bump that was in the middle, something that we really couldn't control unless we tried to add a bunch of extra curves. So the end goal here is to understand what that final surface needs to look like and understand how it's supposed to blend with the rest of the surfaces. All three of these options are perfectly valid. It just depends on what you need out of your surfaces. Now, in this case, the last result obviously took quite a bit more work. We had to spend a lot of time splitting up surfaces and building out these curves, but I think that the end result is likely what the goal was going to be from the start. Now, this doesn't really have any any downstream implications. There are things that you might need to look at if you're going to manufacture this. For example, using curvature map analysis and taking a look at the principal minimum, you would need to take a look at the radii that are being created. This is far from an ideal result. And what I mean by that is that Fusion is not a class A surfacing tool. It is not going to be creating curvature continuous results using patch and loft in these cases. There are other surfacing tools on the market that are class A, meaning that the end result, the surfaces that you're going to get are going to be much higher quality. But if we are working in Fusion, these are the tools we have, and this is a couple of different methods in which we can apply them to get the results that we want. So we can see here that around 5.6, this is the radius that we see on these curves, and you can see it blends away, which is really nice. We can see that it approximately matches the radius that's coming into this corner. Now, of course, we could have done this with simple prismatic shapes by just creating a triangular extrude and then filleting the corners and blending it all together. And again, depending on what your end result is, what you're looking for, those could be valid options. So at this point, I'm gonna hit cancel on the curvature map analysis, and I wanna talk about one more thing before we go. Some of you might be thinking, why didn't we use something like a sweep here? Well, unfortunately with the sweep tool, when we're selecting profiles, we don't have control over tangency. So while we could create a nice sweep, we would then need to cut away more of the surface to blend it together with a loft or a patch. We just simply don't have curvature continuity control when using a sweep. So that's something that we need to think about. There are other tools that we have available to us, things like ruled uh, surfaces, revolved and extrude surfaces. But again, in this case, the only two that are really applicable are patch and loft. Those are really the only two that you're going to get to use to build out this area. So there is one more option that you could explore that we're not gonna cover in this video, and that is going into the forms tools and creating a form surface using the match tool. Now that'll allow you to create a surface that blends between a two edges, but it's not going to allow you to completely patch this opening. Again, there are reasons why you would go into the forms tools versus the surface tools. In a case like this, the, the surface tools are gonna to give you a bit more control and allow you to patch that entire thing. If you have any questions on this, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.